Hi there, this is Love Johar. Thank you so much for tuning into this video and thank you so much for tuning into this channel. This is the workshop series for ITL4 guys. If you are beginning to learn about ITL4, this workshop series is for you guys. If you want to learn more about ITL4 foundation, this workshop series is for you guys. If you want to understand what is ITL4 all about? This workshop series is for you guys. If you want to get certified in ITL4 certification, this workshop series is for you guys. So if you have just, uh, you know, not watched the previous uh, videos in this workshop series, I would highly request you to do that right now before uh, watching this video because only then it will make more sense to you and uh, only then you can understand the uh, you know complete uh, you know knowledge that we are trying to get here and all this information that i am giving here is filled with examples filled with practical solutions not only theory guys so without any further ado let me just quickly jump on to the topic of discussion for today in the previous video we were discussing about the four dimensions of service management guys what are these four dim dimensions why do we need these four dimensions what is the importance of these four dimensions in itl4 has already been discussed in the previous video so i will not repeat that here we have already gone through out of the four dimensions organization and people information and technology partners and suppliers and value streams and processes out of these four we have already gone through first two which are organization and people and information and technology so today we will go through the rest of the two okay and i will give you all the examples i will give you all the information that you need in order to get this understanding around these uh, you know four dimensions okay partners and suppliers guys is the next one okay so partners and suppliers, you know, as the name suggests, what is the objective of this, guys? The objective here is what all third-party vendors, what all third-party suppliers, what all third-party service providers do you need in order to deliver the service is the objective here, guys. You should have a pen and paper handy. You should write down all these uh, things that I am uh, telling you out in these uh, workshop series videos because if you do not have a pen and paper, you will forget it. And all those of you who are watching this video for the first time, I would highly request you to go back and watch this video at least once more so that it can give you complete understanding of what I am discussing here. So what is the objective, guys, for partners and suppliers? The objective is what all third-party vendors, what all third-party suppliers, what all third-party service providers do you need in order to deliver the service to the customer? Now, what is the difference between a partner and a supplier, guys? What is the difference between a partner and a supplier? These two are different terms. Okay. So partner is somebody who works along with the customer. Guys, try to understand this. Partner is someone who works along with the customer and guides them in their strategic business objectives, helps them. It's called a partner. However, a supplier is somebody who only supplies materials. Whatever material you need from that supplier, he will supply you. Okay? So this is the difference between a supplier and a partner, guys. Now, what is a vendor in this case then? So vendor is somebody in this case who provides solutions as well as material also. Vendor does both the things. Okay. So this is the difference between the th three terms. Vendors, partners and suppliers. Okay. So this is as far as the objective is concerned, guys. For the partners and suppliers, service dimension, you know, so as I've already mentioned, what is the difference between partners and suppliers? Number one, partners 
you have a strategic relationship with the partners guys you have a long term relationship with the partners with suppliers you only have an operational or tactical relationship guys so it's entirely different from partners and entirely different to suppliers and for both the partners and suppliers you should have formal contractual agreements in place guys try to understand this very important for both the partners and suppliers you should have proper contractual agreements in place these are very important okay what is the fourth service dimension then the fourth service dimension then talks about value streams and processes guys value streams and processes is very important because this is this value stream concept is a new concept being introduced in ITIL 4 guys all those of you who are studying ITIL 3 in the past you must have not heard about this value stream uh, you know thing it was not there before so this value stream and processes is the first uh, time it is being discussed in ITIL 4 that's why it is very important so what is the objective of value streams and processes guys first of all then we will also understand what is a value stream and what is a process but before doing that what is the objective of this dimension the objective here for value streams and processes is to identify what all different processes we should have in order to deliver the service what all different processes what all different practices because itl4 does not calls calls a process a process it calls a process as a practice because you are practicing that process so it calls it a practice rather than a process so the objective here is to identify what all different practices do you need in order to deliver the service okay now what is a value stream guys we discussed about value stream value stream is nothing but a set of steps a series of activities which you do in order to convert an input to the output okay this is a value stream a sequence of activities a step of activities that you need to perform in order to convert an input to an output what can be an input in this case guys input can be customer requirements guys in this case okay customer requirements again can be of two types number one there can be a new service requirement from the customer altogether that the customer wants you to take over you know he has a new service requirement the other requirement from the customer could be enhancements or customizations or add-ons on the existing services it is very important guys okay so these are the inputs the inputs to the value streams okay now what is an output in this case the output in this case is the value guys because since the beginning we are only talking about value in itl4 so outcome in this case is the value the service that you are providing to the customer in order to fulfill the fulfill the customer requirements is the value here guys that is the output okay now why do we need to understand these value streams guys what is the purpose of understanding these value streams why do we need to understand these inputs and outputs activities okay because once we understand these uh, you know value streams okay once we understand what all activities we need to perform only then we can choose the corresponding practice accordingly because there are different practices that we will be speaking about there are different practices like incident management problem management chain management different types of practices are there we will discuss about them one by one but if you have a clear idea around the set of activities that you need to perform only then you can choose the corresponding practice accordingly as per that activity if you do not have any you know idea about what all activities have to be performed then how will you choose the corresponding practice so that is how the value stream plays a very important role okay 
Now, why do we call it a value stream, guys? Because you can easily call it something else. But what is the meaning of value stream? Value stream is nothing but a series of activities that provide value. Very important, guys. Because you are providing value, that's that's why you call it a value stream. And you remove all the non-value added activities. That is the whole purpose of it, guys. OK. So two things under value streams and processes, service dimension. Number one, identifying what all activities need to be performed. And number two, identifying the practice which is required to carry out these activities are the two main things to cover in the value streams and processes, guys. Okay. After that, there is another, you know, takeaway for you, all those people who are, you know, learning ITL4, which is nothing but a pestle model. What is a pestle model, guys? And why do you need to know about pestle model? Okay. While you are trying to deliver service to your customer, there will always be external factors that you have to consider in. Whenever you are trying to deliver any service to the customer, there will always be external factors that you have to consider in, guys. So ITL4 accumulates them, all the external factors, into one model. And it calls it as Pestel model. So first of all, you have to understand that these are the external factors that you do not have any control over while building your services, while designing your services, while, while delivering your services. And these external factors can impact your four dimensions, which we have just discussed. OK, these external factors can actually impact and hamper the services which you are trying to deliver. So that's why Pestel model is very important. OK, why? Why it can hamper is because these external factors can create risks, guys. And you do not want risks uh, during your service delivery because risks can create a negative impact for you. OK, now what are what is a pestle model, guys? If somebody asks you in an interview, what is a pestle model? So pestle stands for it's an acronym, guys. I will break break it one by one. So pestle is political economical, social, technical, legal, and environmental. This is the, you know, acronym for PESTEL. It's political, economical, social, technical, legal, and environmental. So this is PESTEL, guys. So make sure that you understand it. Okay. So this is what I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, I will discuss the most important topic of ITIL4, guys, which is the service value system. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, I will request you to do that now because this is a workshop series which is ongoing and you will get a lot of value even by listening to this knowledge, even by listening to this stuff. If you are a service provider, if you are working in the support you know, function, if you are working in the technical support, if you are working in the service desk, if you are working in the help desk, if you are working in the knock, all these practices, processes that we are going to discuss next after the service value system will make a lot of sense for you guys. We will be discussing about incident management, change management, problem management, service request management, event management, event monitoring, a lot of different, uh, you know, processes we will discuss about. ITL4 is full of practices, guys. Earlier they used to call it processes. Now they call it practices. So we will discuss about all these important practices, guys, in the upcoming videos. So if you have not subscribed the channel, please do so now. And make sure that you keep on watching these videos, guys. And keep on sharing them also. Thank you so much for 